Hey, welcome back. This is part three where we are learning how to pull information from our email and put it into a Google Sheet using Google Apps Scripts. And we're almost done. We've already got the name and email pulled. We just have to repeat the process for all of the other information. All right. So let's copy this and then continue the process. So we've got name, we've got phone, we've got email address. All right, some of these are going to go away, maybe. We'll see. So let's start with, we've got our name already. And then the next one we're going to do is the phone number. So if you recall, in our logger.log, .log, when we logged out the message, it was pretty much the same as name, except it said phone instead. And you can see phone is one more letter than name. So instead of having six here, we're going to have seven. And we're going to clean this up a little bit. All right. So now you can see name and phone almost are the same. We're saying end substring of name and phone for the length. And then we say phone equals and substring zero index of n. So basically take it from beginning of the phone number to the end of the line. All right. Next after phone is going to be property address. And the way property address was in the log, let's see if the log even has it still. If we have, yeah, we do. You can see the address is stored as property address one colon. So we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, name, phone, property, address, one, colon. So if this string exists in the body of that message, then property, address, one, colon, plus the number of characters in this plus one, which happens to be 20. Uh, if you don't trust me, just count it out. Then you'd say building, which we already have down here, building, that's where we're gonna pull up that value, equals from just after the semicolon to the end of the line. And then we just repeat the process for address two, which is actually the the unit, so let's do view logs. So you see property address one, property address true is the unit. Notice this, this weird less than greater than thing here. That's actually going to spit out in our result as well for now, but it's pretty easy to get rid of. Uh, we're just not gonna do that yet. So now we've got property address two and equals p message substring p message index of property address two plus twenty name and blah 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 keep it all the same instead of name we're going to say unit And then after unit, we've got city, state, and zip, right? So you can see city, city, and then how many is that? C-I-T-Y, five, six. Okay, so there's six is good. And then we're gonna call this city. And now here we're gonna say state. state, S-T-A-T-E, which is seven. Because remember there's a space after each of the colons. We're gonna say state. And then one more, we've got zip. Z-I-P, which I think is capital. If any of this is wrong, it'll be easy to fix. We'll just have to go back and figure out why. So we've got zip, which is gonna be five. 
And zip is Z345, so we'll change that from a 6 to a 5. And we'll call this zip. And that should be it. And let's test it out. Uh, status, date, name, phone, email, building, unit, city, state, zip. Okay. Save it. See where our errors are at. On uh, line 61. And our error is on line 61, it is, there should be a number here, seven, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yep, seven. All right, let's try that again, save. And now let's run it again and see what we get. Running, boom. All right, let's close this out. And you can see we've got status, we've got a date here, we've got a name, we've got a phone number. Now you can see the address and the unit have this weird little, I don't even know what that's for. We can get rid of that pretty darn easily. That's on the address and the unit. So let's start with the address. And let's see, address, address, address. And we're going to say building equals building dot replace with that. And then we'll do the same thing with unit. Unit equals unit. Oh, what just happened? I clicked something. Equals unit dot replace. With that. So that should replace this with an empty string and assign it back to unit. Cool. Saving. Running again and it looks cleaner now. So you can see that it is reading my email and it is putting it into the spreadsheet exactly the way I want it to. Now you may be asking yourself, well, if I had all of those rows, why is it only pulling that one? Recall the actual tag that I'm looking for, label that I'm looking for, is only the apartment inbox label. So I currently only have one with apartment inbox. The rest of them are, are apartment inbox red, so they don't actually have apartment inbox. If I went through and I put a, the apartment inbox label on all of these, it would loop through each of these and then it would display them all into the spreadsheet just the same. Uh, but I'm not gonna do that now because those are real people. All right, so here is the last thing we're gonna talk about. The after you read it the first time, if you don't want to read it every single time you, you run the script, you need to find a way to assign it to something new. Um, hence why I have this called apartment inbox red. I created a label called apartment inbox red. And then what I do after I run this particular method is I drop the label here at the end. And if you look, you can see we've got the end of the function here. This is the end of the for loop. All right. So just on the inside of that, I'm actually going to drop the label off that thread. And that way, next time I come through and do this again, I'm not going to have a label on that thread. It's not going to find it anymore because I don't want to keep putting the same information over and over again into the sheet. So what I'll do is I'll go threads i dot remove label. And then I'm gonna pick the label that I don't wanna have anymore, which we've already said is the label we saved up here at the top, label, apartment inbox. So we're going to remove that label. And then what I'll do is I'll say threads i dot add label. And then we'll go ahead and go gmail app dot get user label by name 
And then we've got apartment inbox red. That means that it's been read and I don't need to do this again. And then finally I'll say threads I dot move to archive. And what this does is it actually drops the inbox label off of the email so that it no longer says inbox. It just has apartment inbox red on it. And when you go to your regular inbox, you're not going to see it anymore. Now for the sort function, that's also a pretty easy function to, to build. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, sort first is going to be what column do we want to sort by. So in this case, we want to sort by date, which the date column is the second column. So we're going to say sort first equals two. And then we'll say sort first ascending equals false. So this would be true if you want to sort ascending, false if you want to sort descending. Descending makes sense in this instance because every time you have a new lead, you want them to be at the top. You don't want to have, you don't want to, have to scroll to the bottom every single time. So after you do that, you can actually sort by a second column as well. So you would say VAR sort second equals three, which in our case we're saying sort by uh, the name next. So if the same person submits a uh, lead or a request on the same day, they'll end up next to each other. So we'll say three and then we'll say VAR sort second ascending equals false. We'll do the same there. And then we'll say there's only one row of header rows. So that is the first row are the header rows. And that's what we need to know. So beyond that, we're going to say sheet equals spreadsheet app dot get active dot get sheet by name. And I think we called our sheet, or I mean, it's defaultly called sheet one. So we could do that. Sheet one. You can do it by active sheet. You can do it by name. You can do it however you want. Um, and then we'll say var range equals sheet.get range. And then here's where we pick in our header rows info and um, the number of header rows that there are. So we'll say header rows plus one, one, sheet dot get max rows minus header rows sheet dot get last column and if this doesn't make sense to you um, I would highly recommend just going to the same website we've been going throughout all these series and pull the info from there it's pretty easy to do I'm not going to spend too much time showing how to do this because this is not exactly the thrust of the video we will say column sort first ascending sort first ascending and we'll say column sort second ascending sort second ascending close bracket and that should be it so after we run this, uh, we could actually do it at the very end here. We would just simply say sort. That would allow us to pull all of our information from our email and then sort it at the end. So that's it for that part. Now I'm going to finish up this function, the format phone function. I added in a parameter and I'm just going to paste in this code. I'm not going to go over too much of how to do this. So if you want to get the code, then there it is for you. But this will basically allow you to get phone numbers in different formats. So if sometimes they have parentheses, sometimes they don't, then that will make them all consistent with how they are being presented in the Google Sheet. So up in the phone, if you have, if you actually want to use this function, where it talks about the phone up here, instead of just saying phone equals whatever happens to be in the email, it's pulling the raw information. What we want to do is we want to say if phone dot index of, and then we're going to look for a parenthesis in there. If 
it doesn't exist, meaning if it returns a negative number, and the phone dot length is greater than zero, meaning if we actually have a number, then what we're going to end up doing is we're going to format, we're going to call that function. We'll say, well, phone equals format underscore phone, and then we don't want to pass in our current value of phone. And then it'll make the change as necessary and then return it back. Um, else, let's, let's put in an else here. Let's say phone equals no number. So for if for whatever reason it doesn't find a phone number, we'll just save it as that. One more piece of information that's going to help you out. And that is, let's say you want to run this once every day or once every 10 minutes or whatever. Um, in order to trigger this automatically, is what you can do is go to current projects triggers. And then here you can see there are none in here. But what I can do is I can actually create a new trigger, add trigger. I want to run it against parse email. And I can make it run time driven. And I can say every hour, every day, every minute. Let's do daily. Select time of day, midnight at 1 a.m. Okay, got it. And then save. And that's it. Now I have a time-based <clears throat> trigger that will call the parse email function once a day between midnight and 1, and it'll populate this sheet automatically every single time. So that is all. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out, shoot me a comment, and uh, we'll go from there. Cool. Thanks. Bye.